What makes the US dollar valuable? Well, it's the only way that we can pay our taxes and the good old network effect. Hey, my name is Brian Kem, and I've studied financial markets and some very interesting technologies. I passed the CFA exams a while back and even worked in Beijing with an alt cryptocurrency back in 2014. Now, I love sharing and connecting new ideas, so I hope you like this video and subscribe for more. Bitcoin has started the new year by climbing over $30,000. This has far surpassed its past big peak set at the end of 2017. It's been a bumpy ride since then, but Bitcoin fans and investors are back in full force. I really can't escape the topic. My dad has even jumped on the bandwagon. So I thought I'd address it again here in a video with some of my thoughts. Just over a year ago, I shared uh, four reasons why Bitcoin will fail as a currency. Up first, it's inherently deflationary. Uh, second, it's re-centralized to help out with adoption. Um, so that re-centralization also adds fees and security concerns. Uh, my third point, it's volatile. And the fourth point I made was that it wastes a lot of energy. I won't rehash each point here in detail, but I'll link to that video down in the description below and also at the end of this video. So stick around. Standalone, some of these points aren't too strong. I admit that, but together they make a, a compelling case against Bitcoin becoming a widely adopted currency. I've gotten over or close to 400 comments on that old video and a lot of them were negative. Although many people didn't realize that I was talking about Bitcoin's potential as a currency. So I want to be clear here, I'm a huge fan of cryptocurrency innovation and Bitcoin has other use cases. I'm just trying to provide a more objective look at it, which hopefully intelligent investors will appreciate. It's true that people can make a lot of money trading Bitcoin in the short term and even in the long term. I'm not here to say otherwise, although I'm personally sitting on the sidelines. I'm putting my hard earned savings into other assets uh, instead, such as dividend paying companies. And to be honest, some of those companies are actually investing in blockchain technologies. Um, when I invest in a company, uh, I share my thesis here on my YouTube channel. This time around, I want to focus on what I think to be one of Bitcoin's biggest drivers going into 2021. I've spoken with Bitcoiners from many walks of life, and one common theme really comes up the most. They don't trust the US government and the dollar. And this is a similar mindset with uh, gold bugs or gold investors. They want to keep it out of the government's reach and hedge against uh, inflation or rising inflation. Some investors even worry about com the complete demise of the dollar. We've seen some other countries recently like Venezuela have hyperinflation. This has led to wider adoption uh, and demand for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Although, what's inflation looking like in the US? People and pundits have been worried about big inflation returning to the US for decades now, but inflation has bounced around roughly 2% over the last uh, two decades. And interest rates have come down since the 1980s and are near record lows. Now, the recent rounds of stimulus have definitely added fuel to the fire. Many people believe that government's increased deficit spending and expansion of its monetary base will spur inflation. Although, I'm really not too certain on that. It might or it might not. With this first chart I have for you, you can see a big spike in M2 money supply. And as you can see in this other chart, it's the total public federal debt. There has also been a recent spike. Although I do want to point out that both of these charts are linear, not logarithmic. To compare, here are the log versions of the charts that don't look as bad. Um, logarithmic charts can be better at showing change over time due to compounding nominal changes relative to percentage change. The government spending beyond its means is nothing new. The US has shut down many times and the government has raised the debt ceiling close to, I think, 90 times over the last century. And over that time frame, the stock market has just continued to bounce around, but it's continued to climb higher. Over that time frame, crime is down drastically, human longevity is up, and there has been a great deal of progress on many other fronts. 
To be honest, I'm probably more worried about deflation thanks to technological progress and concentration of wealth. Also, many people overlook that the velocity of money and how money moves in different ways, uh, they're very important components to consider when trying to predict inflation as measured by CPI, not merely the currency base. Just because the money printing press is running hot doesn't mean that all that new money is pushing up asset prices. However, I do definitely have some concerns about global monetary policy, but really that's a conversation for another time. Overall, there will be some Bitcoin setbacks, but I believe there's more room for it to climb. And as far as a more concrete Bitcoin prediction in 2021, I believe it'd be foolish to come up with a short-term price target for it. I personally don't have a crystal ball, and I'd caution you about others that believe they do. Here is one truth though going forward. Bitcoin will continue to be worth what others are willing to pay for it. And based on my experiences, it looks like it will continue to be valuable for the foreseeable future. I'm not telling you to buy or sell. Instead, I'm just trying to provide some ideas um, which will hopefully help you make better decisions overall. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them down below. And uh, while you're down there, I'd really appreciate it if you just tap that like button as well as subscribe. And if you tap that dislike button, that's okay too, but then I'd appreciate it if you let me know why so I can improve going forward. Thank you.